To start, remove the printer base and Z-axis aluminium bar along with the angle block and two bolts from the box. Flip the base over and you will see two bolt holes. Insert the two bolts into these holes as shown. The bolts will protrude through the other side and this is where the Z-axis bar should be inserted. The bolts will locate on these two holes. Tighten the bolts until the structure is sturdy. Use the angle block shown to reinforce the Z-axis bar by sliding the bolt ends into the slots on the bar and tightening. Next, remove the Y-axis stepper motor from the box and securely fasten it to the Y-axis bar. This should be as level as possible. Now, remove the bed platform along with one of the two included belts and affix it to one end of the platform. Slide the platform onto the Y-axis bar, allowing the belt to fall into the groove and rest over the stepper motor. Retrieve the Y-axis tensioner and feed the belt through the middle of the Y-axis bar. Fit the tensioner so that the belts can go around it and fasten. Fix the other end of the belt to the platform ensuring that the belt is taut. Retrieve the Y-axis end stop switch and fix it to the outside of the Y-axis bar so that the push switch faces the platform. You should hear an audible click when the platform reaches the end stop. To fit the build platform, remove it from the box along with a set of three adjusting bolts. These should consist of a bolt, a spring and a nut. Line the base up with the holes on the platform and put the adjusting bolts through so that the spring is between the base and the platform and the nut is underneath the platform.
repeat for all three adjusters. Now it's time to fit the z-axis screw into its stepper motor. To do this, loosen the grub screw on the motor collar. Insert the screw rod and re-tighten the grub screw, making sure that the rod is secure. To fit the motor to the printer, line the screws on the motor into the slots on the back of the Z-axis bar and tighten. Retrieve the Z-axis stop from the box. Plug the stop into the marked cable and attach to the side of the Z-axis bar, paying close attention to the orientation shown in the video. Use the screw that came with the Z-stop to further attach the switch into the Z-axis bar. Now for the X-axis motor. Retrieve the bag labelled X-limit and remove all of its contents. Screw the standoff into the base of the motor module and attach the X-limit switch to the standoffs in the orientation shown, using the remaining screws. The x-axis bar will have a notch cut into it to allow a bolt head to fit flush with the bar. It is very important that the bar is connected in the correct orientation. Tighten the bolts for the bar from the other side of the motor module. The bar should be perfectly flush as shown here. Using the remaining belt, it is now time to fit the extruder onto the x-axis. Start by feeding the belt around the stepper motor, making sure that it is inside the standoffs.
feed one side of the belt into the channel of the bar and slide the extruder over the top of this, making sure that the extruder is the correct way up. Now attach both ends of the belt to the extruder by sliding the belt into the slots. Attach the x-axis tensioner to the other end of the x-axis bar making sure that the belt is under tension when tightening. The extruder should hit the end stop switch at full travel. To attach the feed tube, grab the white tube coming out from the extruder and screw it into the hole shown on the feeder motor. This screw is self-tapping so you can use the included tool to tighten it. The extruder arm can be placed onto the printer by sliding the rollers onto the z-axis bar and hand screwing the z-axis rod into it so that it is fully located on the bar. Your printer should look like this at this stage in the build. The spool holder is next. Remove the end caps and screws from the bag. Attach one end cap to the spool handle. Fit the spool stand to the top of the z-axis bar with the ender logo facing the front of the printer. Use the two screws in the bag to fasten it on. Place the handle so that it overhangs the rear of the printer and then attach the other end cap so that it is securely fastened. Now it's time to hook all the wires up. The labelling on the wires means that it's fairly self-explanatory which plug goes in where, but pay closer attention to the video if you're having trouble. The wires are all plugged in, but it's a bit of a mess. Thankfully, five cable ties are included to sort this out. The positions of these should be roughly the same as those shown.
final step in the build process is to fit the build plate cover. Simply remove the protective film and place the pad on the build plate, making sure that everything is lined up 